And educators across the country are raising the alarm over a new technology that is making it easier to cheat. Students are using it and head teachers have all asked for an emergency summit. Essays, philosophical questions, even therapy. ChatGPT is a computer program that will write whatever you want quickly and convincingly and with better grammar than a grade school teacher. Sure, at this point, everyone is talking about how powerful ChatGPT can be. It can write chat up lines for dating apps, the dark web is trying to get it to code malware for online scammers, and it's even being used to write speeches for US senators. And students have clocked that ChatGPT's potential could help them maybe even cheat their way through school. Now, when I'm not making videos, I moonlight as a university lecturer, and I want to know if ChatGPT could trick me. But first, let's find out how we got to this point. It's 1951 at the University of Manchester in the UK. Christopher Strachey, under the watchful gaze of Alan Turing, just hit enter, or whatever the equivalent of Ferranti Mark I had, on the first artificial intelligence program capable of playing a game of checkers. To which Alan Turing responded, great, now prove it isn't sentient. A year earlier, Alan Turing had published Computing, Machinery and Intelligence, in which he proposes the imitation game, a test of a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to or indistinguishable from that of a human. This will later become known as the Turing test. Obviously that initial code was reasonably rudimentary, it would take another decade before US programmer Arthur Samuel would improve on Strachey's initial code so it could beat a former checkers champion, and longer than 30 years more before IBM's Deep Blue could best the then world-class chess champion Garry Kasparov. But forget board games, the Turing test was meant for a human evaluator to judge the natural language conversation between a human and a machine designed to generate human-like responses. We are now, with AI tools like ChatGPT that are much more powerful, increasingly close for the very first time to a machine intelligence becoming indistinguishable from human intelligence. Developers OpenAI unleashed ChatGPT on the internet on November 30th, 2022. By the following Wednesday, more than 1 million people had tested the AI's tool's potential. It is a language-based model which can synthesize an almost natural conversation, responding to questions and requests, learning and improving as it goes. For example, if I ask it to create a description for this YouTube channel and input some relevant information to help it along that process, it will deliver a pretty good response. It currently thinks I'm a medical doctor, but I can help it to fine tune its work and it even owns up to its mistakes. For the time being, ChatGPT can't pull new information from the internet. Instead, it relies on previous interactions and a vast data set of textbooks, websites, and articles. But that repository is restricted to information up until 2021. So it has some limitations. In December, a group of researchers proved that it could pass a version of the United States medical licensing examination, scoring around 60% on each test. By no means a high flyer, but still absolutely a passing mark. But this begs the question of when will students start using it as a performance enhancer or cheating tool to help them pass exams and essays? Now, none of my students that I've caught at least have used ChatGPT, but I've sat in already on two disciplinary board meetings to decide the fates of less studious students. Uh, so I thought, why not ask some of my students what they think about it? It's kind of creepy, to be honest with you. Uh, just having instant information constantly just streamed at you in like four paragraphs, especially when you think about the sort of aunt, the question that you're giving it. I, I heard that um, academics couldn't tell the difference between essays written from the AI and from students. So obviously there are websites where you can buy an essay and they obviously say they'll penalise you for doing that but I don't also know how efficient they are at discovering that. 
<laughs> Not that I've done it. <laughs> okay, so my students aren't fessing up about it, but institutions are taking steps already to counter ChatGPT. UNSW's AI professor told local press that the only way to avoid ChatGPT cheaters would be to go back to pen and paper. But then how long before AI writes in cursive instead of in Times New Roman? There's already a startup near me that uses a 3D printer like setup to write handwritten cards. It's not that huge of a leap to think that a handwritten essay service could be the next great startup idea. There are at least some telltale signs of AI writing. For example, how fluently the text reads, how frequently certain words appear, or whether there are patterns in punctuation or sentence lengths. So let's see if ChatGPT can pull a fast one over on me. But first, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Ren. REN is a public benefit corporation where you can sponsor projects that make a difference in the fight against climate change. One project I like is mineral weathering in Scotland. In this project, Future Forests sources basalt rock and spreads them over forest land. As rainwater containing dissolved CO2 falls onto the land, it reacts with the basalt, raising the pH, which ultimately turns into a solid mineral like calcium carbonate. This locks away the CO2 so it won't re-enter the atmosphere for many thousands of years. By signing up to REN, you can support these sorts of cool projects. The first 100 to sign up will get their first month of subscriptions covered by REN for free. Now, back to the video. So here's a test I devised. I asked students to prepare two written pieces, which I have in front of me. Both are explanations of wave particle duality. ChatGPT wrote one and a student wrote the other. My job is to see if I can tell the difference between the two. Read along with me and see if you can spot which one is generated by an AI. Explanation A. Wave particle duality is the ability of particles such as atoms, photons, and electrons to behave under some conditions like waves and others like particles. The objects we call particles are actually neither waves nor particles, but something else that the human mind is not capable of visualizing. Wave particle duality has been observed in many experiments and is described by the mathematical laws of quantum mechanics. The classical proof that particles have wave properties is the two-slit interference experiment. In this experiment, a barrier is set up with two slits cut in it so that particles shot towards the barrier might pass through either slit. Explanation B. Wave particle duality refers to the concept in quantum mechanics that a particle can exhibit both wave-like and particle-like behavior. This idea is described by the wave particle duality theory, which states that particles such as electrons and photons can act as a wave or a particle depending on how they are observed or measured. In some experiments, particles exhibit behavior consistent with waves, such as diffraction and interference. In other experiments, particles exhibit behavior consistent with individual objects, such as the detection of a single photon at a specific location. This dual behavior is a fundamental aspect of quantum mechanics and is a key feature of the theory that sets apart from classical physics. First honest reaction, I have literally no idea. Uh, I think explanation A maybe used some shorter words potentially, when like, things like particle shot towards the barrier felt a bit more colloquial than maybe explanation B. Uh, explanation B potentially repeated itself a couple of times, so this kind of first sentence and the second sentence feel basically like it's telling me the same thing twice, uh, which apparently AIs like to do. Uh, but I also think the final sentence is quite an elegant kind of summary, I suppose, of the whole idea, and almost has quite a nice narrative arc to the piece. Uh, so it feels like explanation B maybe is the better writing, explanation A maybe is the worse writing, both of them are broadly correct, I don't see anything wrong with the, the physics. Explanation A also uses an example of a particular experiment, the double slit experiment, but it calls it the two slit experiment, interference experiment, which maybe isn't what most people would call it, and I think an AI would know that. I think explanation A is written by a human being, explanation B, because it is too good and too accurate, is written by the computer. And if I'm wrong, I apologize to the students. <laughs> so 
Earlier, my producer sent me an email with a do not open in the subject that has the answer inside. Let me open it up and find out. A is the human being. B is chat GPT. Uh, <laughs> I was right. Luckily, I will not always be responsible for catching AI usage. There are a number of systems already out there on the internet, like ChatGPT0, uh, which claims to spot AI-created text. And New Scientist, I think, released a report recently that OpenAI is actually working on some cryptographic watermarking to help tackle cheaters. But what if we viewed this AI less as a cheating tool and more as a learning tool, like a calculator, rather than a crutch. At the University of Pennsylvania, Associate Professor Ethan Mollock's entrepreneurship students are required to use ChatGPT in their learning. And I think that's a really interesting approach to changing a viewpoint of how can these new innovations be used in the classroom for good, not for evil. What if we view it at the end of the day as just a quicker way to search the internet? quicker, potentially, than even Google. I asked ChatGPT if it was planning to replace Google search. It told me that currently it wasn't up to the job, mainly because it's limited to the info it already knows and it can't index the internet for the moment anyway. But ChatGPT is just one corner of OpenAI's artificial intelligence development with speech detection, text to image generation, and the tech powering GPT available as an API used by companies like Duolingo. In any case, OpenAI announced in January 6th a further $10 billion investment from long-term partner Microsoft. Maybe for the first time, Bing will start to be a real competitor to Google, who knows? Or finally, maybe even Clippy will become the all-powerful help assistant we all knew he one day could grow up to become. I'm constantly struck that at this moment in time, like no other, our intelligence is outpacing our wisdom. The things humanity has become capable of so far exceed our ability to understand their possibilities or their consequences the future often feels like it's balancing precariously on a knife edge somewhere between utopia and apocalypse. But it's for this generation and all future generations to choose wisely how to treat these newfound capabilities. Thanks very much for watching.